Well, hello there. Yep, haven't slept again. How'd you know? How could you tell? Is it the grease? Is it the bags under my eyes? What what gave it away? Uh, yeah, no, I couldn't sleep again. What? Big whoop. Want to fight about it? Uh, anyway, decided to use this insomnia as like a superpower here. To, to grow my brain here. Get real, real big and smart. And look into something chat told me about that I kind of wrote off pretty quickly as being probably nonsense about... NASA discovering evidence, potential evidence, of ancient life on Mars. This is a headline I've seen regurgitated like once a year every year for the last 31 years of my life. And it never actually leads to anything, it never goes anywhere, there's never any confirmation, and a lot of the evidence in many of the cases feels very flimsy where it's like, well, we... Using this rover, it drove over this grain of sand that reacted in a weird way. It made like a whoopee cushion sound, which means that was most likely probably some microbial life playing a prank on us. We knew it all along. Maybe. So I've kind of just instinctually started to write it off as most likely horseradish. So when chat was telling me, I kind of was very dismissive of it. But since I couldn't sleep, I decided, well, let's take a peek. Let's see what all the hoopla is about, huh? Yes very well could be the clearest sign of life that we've ever found on Mars. So last July, NASA's Perseverance rover found a leopard-spotted rock at Mars. And scientists immediately knew it was interesting we hadn't seen anything like that before. What we saw in this rock were these layers of very fine-grained, rusty red mudstone that had in them these incredible features, these things that we took to calling poppy seeds, which are the sort of dark black spots in the rock, and leopard spots, which are these kind of ring-shaped features that have dark rims around them. I'm not a geologist, so the significance of this rock kind of eludes me. I do think they do a good job of breaking down why it's a big deal and what it actually indicates, but in my sleep-deprived state, I unironically thought when they were showing the leopard spots, I thought it was going to be something like fucking eye-popping, having my eyes go out of my skull like a cartoon character. I thought they were going to say, like, and these leopard spots here, these dark rings, well, it turns out these are cigarette burns, indicating that we had tobacco-smoking doobie lord monsters on Mars at one point, or just something unhinged. I don't know why I was expecting that. I guess maybe with the way chat was talking about it, kind of just planted the idea in my head. But even still, the actual, like, real explanation is still cool. Just not quite to that level. We've done the analysis on these leopard spots, um, and we, you know, we think they are potentially made by some sort of ancient life. Um, this per this finding by our incredible Perseverance rover is the closest we've actually come to discovering uh, ancient life on Mars. The discovery of a potential biosignature or a feature or signature that could be consistent with biological processes, but that requires further work and study to confirm a biological origin. That's the quick and dirty of it. That's kind of the rock in a nutshell and its importance. Basically, they found this very peculiar geode here that they don't have a way of explaining how it could be like that without life being involved in some way. They have a null hypothesis where they attempted to prove that it's not life, but were unable to prove that. But I wanted more information than just that. I wanted more than just a surface level dive on it, so I went to a YouTuber named Anton Petrov, who covered it beautifully. I highly recommend you check out his full video. I'm going to play a couple clips for you here. For several years, this rover has been moving across the Jezero crater in order to collect several samples and in order to possibly find life. And here this crater was chosen specifically for one reason. Researchers believe that this used to be some kind of an ancient lake and also very likely contained a river delta, both of which are environments considered to be prime targets in the search for extraterrestrial life. Now this is something I did know about and I think a lot of people get confused about with like the mission of the Mars rovers. A lot of people are under the impression they're actively looking for water on Mars or life on Mars like they're going to stumble into a fucking frat house or something up there. The goal is to put these rovers and explore areas where they believe water once was. So this area was chosen because they believed it could have been an ancient lake. So that was something I was aware of, but I wanted to put it here just in case people were still kind of confused about like, well, why are they looking at, you know, fucking rock? I thought they were up there trying to, you know, get water samples and stuff. That, that is not exact. I mean, if they could do that, if they find that, that'd be huge. That would actually be like game changing, but that's not like 
the primary directive here. They're not expecting to somehow find that. And it actually stood out because of these somewhat bizarre markings. They were referred to as the leopard spots. With the initial scans revealing that it seemed to contain organic compounds that might have come from some kind of ancient life. Or at least showed us that there were clear evidence of liquid water in the past, and so life did have conditions necessary to exist. And it also contained these flecks or these unusual spots of iron and phosphates from various chemical reactions that though could have been just chemical in nature, could also have been produced by ancient microbes that possibly used this for energy. So that's how it ties into ancient life. Why this rock would be potentially indicative of ancient life. It could have been used by ancient microbes on Mars, the fucking Martian microbes, as energy. And what we're seeing here is kind of the result of that. Or it could just be a chemical process in nature that the scientists aren't overly familiar with at the moment. And since it's not exactly a convenient trip over there to grab the sample, nor is it feasible to send the sample from Mars back to Earth because we don't have a retrieval mission scheduled any longer, I actually learned from Anton Petrov here that the like retrieval mission, which was supposed to get the Mars sample to study them on Earth in our labs, where we could actually like do some real heavy digging on it and figure out, you know, what the fuck is going on, get into the bare butt cheeks of it. Apparently that has been put on an indefinite hold. So right now, there's only so much they can do to analyze that rock. And at the moment, they can't prove that it's not, you know, indicative of microbial life because it is peculiar and there are some markers that it could be. And this is a really interesting study. Now, first of all, this is really good science. There are no speculations here. There are absolutely no assumptions based on some kind of a preconception. And most importantly, this whole study is based on a null hypothesis. In essence, they're trying to prove that whatever they discovered is not life. But at the end of the study, the conclusion is that they're actually unable to do so. They don't have an explanation for what was discovered if it was not produced by life. As he mentions, that's good science. That is, that is chef's kiss, what you want to hear. And, not to toot my own horn, it's how I approach ghost hunting. <laughs> About as far removed from science as you can get real quick, but just hear me out. I approach all of our paranormal investigations with the sole intent of proving empirically that ghosts are real. My, you know, biases about, I don't think that shit's real play no role in my science. It just happens to be that all of the science points to ghosts don't exist. So even though I'm going in there for that, I always end up proving so far that they're not real. But maybe one day that'll change. Actually, the more I talk about this and say it out loud, it's not really a null hypothesis at all. But it did just somewhat remind me of my ghost hunting methodology and how I approach it. Anyway, though, as he says, the, the report here is very good science and it is super interesting. As far as these life on Mars claims go that I've been privy to over the 31 years I've been alive, this one so far holds the most weight to me. Like, this does seem pretty significant. Which usually contains iron phosphate and gray agate, which contains iron sulfides. But what's really key here is how these minerals were arranged. Because on Earth, we usually see very similar arrangements in water sediments where microbes are physically eating organic matter and then breathing out rust and sulfates. This is usually referred to as redox cycling. And so the presence and distribution of these minerals in the Martian rocks potentially suggests similar biological processes that might have happened here before. And one of the scientists from the study, Michael Tice, essentially describes this as something that would be very easy to explain if there was life, but something that would be extremely difficult to explain if it wasn't. So if this was just the chemical or geological processes, it would be super difficult to explain. And that right there is kind of the bread and butter of why this could potentially indicate my ancient microbial life, because the geological and chemical processes that we're familiar with they would very much struggle to explain the presence of what they found on this rock. Meanwhile, if it was microbial life, that easily explains it. It's not to say that 100% like confirms it or anything. There is still wiggle room that maybe there is just a process that we don't know about that is geological and chemical and does not have anything to do with life at all. It is possible, but it is seeming more so, at least to me, that it is likely explained with ancient microbial life being responsible for that. 
which is pretty cool. And I, when this, I, I was looking up like people's reactions to this, and a lot of people are downplaying it as like not a big deal. Who cares? Not a three titted a goth alien babe. Why should I even bother giving a fuck? And I think that perspective is kind of dog shit. Uh, I want to go ahead and show you Anton kind of going over some of the implications if this truly is ancient microbial life. It would have profound implications on life existing elsewhere in the universe. It would basically suggest that developing life on different planets may not be as difficult after all. And so if life arose independently on two different planets in a single star system, it may suggest that life is not rare, but there is also this idea of panspermia. Maybe life started on Mars and then got transported to Earth. Or I guess vice versa. And so maybe what we're seeing here are two different cousins that eventually ended up on two different planets. And finally, this idea also brings up the very important great filter hypothesis. And so if the simple microbial life is common, why don't we actually see intelligent complex life as well? And so is there some kind of a filter that's stopping everything? And is there something really major basically preventing life from becoming super advanced? And if so, what is it? Of course, this is just some of, I imagine, many uh, discussions and questions and things that arise should this actually be confirmed as ancient microbial life. I, I find it to just be really fascinating. Any kind of proof that we're not alone in the universe, I think, is a big fucking deal. Like, truly. The Great Filter in particular is always such an interesting thought, because if this is ancient microbial life, it would really then need to be, like, thought about deeply why we're not finding complex life. Because if we can prove that we're not alone, we're not like the first and only civilization in the universe, here's proof of ancient microbial life on Mars, well, what happened, you know, to prevent other civilizations from, you know, sprouting up elsewhere that we would have probably at least seen inklings of by this point? What is stopping it, if there is anything at all stopping it? It's all just so big in scale. I don't know. I always find shit like this very cool when it is legitimately something worth getting excited about, which I do think this is. I really appreciate Anton's coverage of it. Again, I recommend the full video. It'll be in the description. And chat wasn't lying. Like, they, they weren't overhyping this. I did think it was pretty huge. It seems, to me, like pretty strong evidence of ancient microbial life, but I guess we'll see as more tests get conducted on it. I guess as many tests as they possibly can do from this distance since they can't get it into labs here or anything there's only so much available to them but for now i'll just try and keep my pink my my finger on the pulse of it that's really about it see ya